Hi guys, I'm Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs and I have come with a lot of interesting news for today. But before starting this video, I would like to introduce myself. So I have done my graduation from Lakshmibai College, Delhi University. Then I have pursued my master's in English literature from IGNU University. And I have been mentor for current affairs for RBS Sebi Nabad examinations for more than a year. And I today in this today's video, we will be discussing a lot of interesting news. But I would like to caution you that this video is going to be a little lengthy. Why? The reason is that we have firstly, we have the total number of 10 news. And secondly, those news are very important and they require us to delve into a little bit bit of details. So I will try to make those news very interesting for you as well as simple and easier. So let's begin the today's video without wasting any time. But uh, I would like you to uh, I would like you guys to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that whenever we come live and we upload any kind of new video, you get the latest notification. Besides this, you can also join this telegram group. And uh, here comes our first question. So we will be quickly discussing the first question without discussing the table of contents. Uh, the reason behind removing table of contents is that uh, many students were saying me that they don't have time. They don't have that much time and table of contents stretch the video a little. That is why I removed the table of contents and with the first question we will be moving ahead with the video. So what is the first question? What is India's overall rank in Oxfam's commitment to reducing inequality index 2020? Firstly, what is the thing that we need to pay attention to is that this index is released by Oxfam. And what is the answer of this question? What is the question asking us? It is asking us about the India's overall rank. So what is India's over, overall rank? It is 129. Now, apart from this, I have always told you that if, whenever you are covering any kind of index, you have to keep in mind five things. First, the organization releasing the index. Second, the top country. Then the total number of countries, India's rank. And fourth uh, is the parameters. And uh, sixth point is whenever there are any kind of extra facts, particularly related to India, then you need to pay attention to those facts as well. So I have in this video, I have uh, firstly, I will be discussing the five major points about this index and then we will be discussing about the facts that this report mentioned about India. So what are the five points? First of all, the total number of countries that were assessed in this index. So how many countries were assessed? A total number of 158 and out of these 158, India's rank is 129. Do remember this thing. Then the top country is Norway. The country which has topped this index. Then we have, if we are talking about the top country, then there would be a bottom country as well. So which country is at the bottom? It is South Sudan, which is at 158th rank. Then we have the parameters of this ranking. So a total number of three parameters were there. What are those three parameters? First is public service. Second parameter is taxation. And third parameter is legal, sorry, labor rights. Wages. So this is the third uh, parameter of this index. Now individual ranks have been assigned to countries in these parameters. We have to only take care of India's rank in individual parameters as well as India's overall rank. We will not be dealing with the uh, rank of Norway or South Sudan because that is not very important for us. What is the most important thing is uh, thing is India's rank. So we will be talking about India's rank only. So India has ranked 141 one in this public service uh, index, in this public service parameter. Then India is at the 19th rank in taxation parameter and in labor wages and 
labor rights india is at the 150 uh, 151st rank out of the 158 total countries that were assessed by this index so this is the these are the facts that you need to keep in mind uh, about this index now guys i have forgotten one thing the thing is this public service parameter is subdivided into three sub parameters which are health education and social protection so in with regards to health this index mentions a quite number of facts about india and what are those facts we will be discussing those facts in the next slide but till now whatever i have told you i hope that it is clear and if it is not clear then do mention it in the comment section uh, and these are the facts that you need to keep in mind i hope that they are very clear to you so i have discussed everything every major point regarding this index and we will be discussing the sixth most important point and that point is facts about india so since i have told you that health is an important sub parameter why is health is so important the reason is coronavirus crisis the covid 19 crisis has shaken the whole world and awakened the world towards the health uh, health allocation and health infrastructure of the world so that is why uh, health has been paid so much attention to so in this uh, slide i have put all the important uh, facts about india so this report mentions that india's health spending as a percentage of gdp is fourth lowest in the world what does that mean that india spends almost uh, uh, almost very low india is at the very low rank when it comes to health spending as a percentage of gdp then what is the next fact afghanistan and india are at the same level when it comes to their health expenditure health expenditure as a percentage of gdp how much uh, percentage are we allocating for health infrastructure that is the meaning of percentage of gdp so india and afghanistan spend almost 4% of their gdp uh, on their health infrastructure now what is the third point the third point is that according to world bank database for 2017 since this database was quoted by oxfam's report that is why we are talking about this world bank's database that is as old as of 2017 but this is important so if, according to this database india was the 13th lowest country in terms of health spending so how much india was spending in 2017 it was 3.4% so these are the facts that this report about, mentioned about india's health spending and next we have facts on the labor rights and wages because this is very important again why because covid 19 has also uh, also snatched many jobs and rendered many jobless uh, many people as workless and that is why it is very important for us to know how secure our country is in terms of employment so that is why these are the these facts are very important so what is the first fact here first fact is very important it is saying that india was even worse prepared for facing the economic fallout of the pandemic so india was worse prepared why india was first was prepared the reason is that 75 percent of indian workforce is engaged in vulnerable employment is engaged in informal or we can say that sector which lacks social security and only 10 percent of the workforce in india is formal with safe working conditions and social security so that is uh, why India was worse prepared for the economic fallout of the, uh, the pandemic. These are the facts that we need to pay attention to apart from this one. Which is the most important one. India ranked at the 8th from the bottom that is at 151st that we have discussed it in the first slide itself. So here this question ends we have talked about every detail about that index. And I hope that you have understood what I have told you. But in case if you have any kinds of doubt, feel free to ask me in the comment section.
now comes our second question which is about how many new animal species were discovered in india that were unknown to the world before according to zoological survey of india's animal discoveries 2019 report first of all before discussing the answer of this question we need to discuss what this report is because if we directly jump on to the answer it will become meaningless to discuss this question itself that is why i will be discussing the report first so in this slide i have put both the reports recently two reports were released animal discoveries 2019 and plant discoveries 2019 so animal discoveries 2019 was released by zoological survey of india and plant species uh, discoveries 2019 was released by botanical survey of india now these two reports are published annually and this year is the 13th edition of these reports that's the basic background information that you need to keep in mind about these reports now what are the facts that the 2019 edition of these reports mention let's first discuss the animal discoveries report then we will be moving on to the plant discoveries report so animal discoveries report says that 364 new animal species that are unknown to the science before to the world before and 116 species that were recorded for the first time from india now what does the that mean what is the difference between 364 and 116 species 364 species are those species which were not known to the world earlier before india discovered them and 116 species were those species that were existent in india, uh, in the world but were not found in india so that is the basic difference and the this is the first fact about this report now what is the major and most important fact uh, in this report uh, the most important fact is that indian animal species diversity is equivalent to 6.52% of all the species across the globe that means uh, 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 out of all the species that are found in the globe uh, almost 6.5% species exist in india so that is the most important fact that you need to keep in mind and this is this uh, animal discoveries report 2019 there is nothing else that we could discover about this discuss about this report now we will be discussing about plant discoveries 2019 report so this report says that 118 new plant species and 73 new records that were not found in india before so these two are the numbers these two are the new species found in india and apart from this indian plant species account for 12% of the global plant species that means all these species that are present in the world out of those species 12% of plant species exist in india so these are the most important facts and from here the answer of the question is very clear the answer is 364 species option a and here these reports ends and this question is also completed and we will be discussing the third question of the day so the third question is which state has partnered with india post for getting farmers enrolled in the pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi scheme now this is the central scheme and we have discussed it in morning tales now when do when did we discuss it we discussed it when we had covered the mukhya mantri kisan kalyan yojana of madhya pradesh i hope that you remember the scheme and the provisions that we discussed in the scheme and if you have not the if you do not remember the scheme then do watch the previous sessions of morning tales as well and follow this uh, follow this series of current affairs regularly so that you keep the track of uh, things that are going on now let's come back to the question so the question is asking you with about the state so the state is goa which has partnered with indian post now there is a peculiar thing about this question about this initiative that goa has taken 
the peculiar thing is that this is the first of its kind initiative in india that has been taken by goan government now why is it first of its its kind the reason is that no other state has partnered with indian post for uh, enrolling the uh, enrolling the farmers in government scheme so that is why this is very important for us to remember next question is which state has become the first state to make public education sector fully digital first of all what is the meaning of making public education sector fully digital the basic meaning is that the public education sector is public schools so the public schools and higher education sector uh, institutions have become fully digital with high tech technology so that is why uh, it uh, this thing is mentioned here public education sector becoming fully digital now which state has done so so the answer to this question is option b kerala now what is the trick that you can deploy her to remember this question better the trick is we all know that kerala has the highest literacy rate in india and if the kerala is so educated then obviously in uh, education sector its advancements its initiatives would be unique and would be uh, forward than other sectors so becoming fully digital is one of that state of uh, is one of that forward action that kerala has taken i hope that till now i am clear to you and if uh, and if you have any kind of problem in this in discussing anything or in understanding anything you can ask me in the comment section and let's discuss the next question which is according to a new report by 2050 india will become the third largest economy by surpassing japan which journal was the study published in quite intriguing and the minuscule information from where this question has been put up the question is not asking you about the year or any other thing it is asking you about the journal in which this report was published so the journal is the lancet now there was no name of this report so you have to remember this thing that in the report which was published in the lancet mentions this thing that india will become third largest by 2050 by surpassing japan now if india is third largest then there, there would be two countries preceding india and which two countries are those obviously us and china so us and china will be at first and second by 2050 and india will be at third position and india is going to retain its third position by the year 2100 so this will remain uh, india will remain at the third position in terms of its economy from 2050 to 2100 now what are the other facts that this report mentioned the report also states that by the year 2100 india is the only country uh, which will have the working age population not the only country the top country which will have the largest share of working age population so this is the second fact about this report that you have to keep in mind mm -hmm. apart from this the report has been prepared these estimations have been prepared on the basis of 2017 data and in 2017 india was the seventh largest economy so on the basis of the projections on the basis of india's performance in 2017 these projections have been prepared and that's all that we could discuss about that question because there are nothing there are no details about that news so do remember those the points that i have told you about the new report which was published in the lancet now comes our next question which is about with how many institutes has center for development of advanced computing signed an mou for establishing manufacturing units of supercomputer under the phase 2 of national supercomputer mission so basically the question is asking you 
about the uh, number of institutes with which center for developing advanced computing which is which is short form as cdac so with which cdac has partnered in order to establish manufacturing units for super computer so let's discuss the answer of this question first and then we will be discussing about this mission in detail so the answer is 13 with a total number of 13 institutes uh, cdac has partnered to establish the manufacturing unit of supercomputer for uh, under the national supercomputer mission now what is this national supercomputer mission and do remember this thing that we are talking about phase 2 of this mission and that if we are talking about phase 2 then there would be a phase 1 so when was this phase 1 mission launched phase 1 of this mission launched phase 1 was launched in the year 2015 for a period of 7 years so the mission was launched in 2015 to 2022 for a period of 7 years and what is the purpose of this mission the purpose is to establish supercomputer units supercomputer facilities in 70 higher education institutes so this is the purpose of this mission for which uh this mission and the cdac has partnered with 13 institutes to establish the supercomputer units so do remember these two facts apart from this the other fact that we need to keep in mind is the implementing agency of national supercomputer mission so this mission is implemented by cdac that is center for developing development of advanced computing and Indian Institute of Science, which is located in Bangalore. So these are the details that you need to keep in mind regarding the National Supercomputer Mission. Apart from remembering this question, that it, the, uh, recently CDAC has partnered with thirteen institutes. I hope I am clear till now. and here comes the next question of the day and from now onwards the questions are light so you can relax yourself because i know the questions that we have discussed earlier were quite heavy so that is why i have put these light questions in the end so that you can uh, give a break to your mind and your body so this question is who has won the 2020 shastra ramanujan prize since clearly the name meant, uh, the name of this award mentions ramanujan do you guys know who ramanujan is i hope that everybody out there would know the answer he was a very famous mathematician and since the award is named after a mathematician then obviously it would be in the field of mathematics so the award is given to those individuals who perform excellent in the field of mathematics now which organization gives this award shastra university which is located in tamil nadu so this university confers this award annually uh, to the person to the people who perform excellent in the field of mathematics and this year shai evra has been given this award so that's all that we need to keep in mind about this news and we will be quickly moving on towards our next question so who has been elected as the president of federation of motor sports clubs of india first of all this is the apex body this is the major regulator that regulates motor sports in india and its president is akbar ibrahim he has been elected for a second term as a president and he was form he was a former motor sport racer motor racer do remember this thing these are the minute details that you can keep in mind then uh, the next question is about who is the author of the khalistan conspiracy a former law officer and reverse the path to 1984 book those who are the bookworms do those who like to read a lot for them this question is a good here so this question tells us about a new book which has been released and the book has been written by gbs siddu so he is the answer of this question do remember this thing there are high chances that this book can be asked in any kind of examination be it sebi be it rbi in a bark 
other banking IPO level examinations. So that is why I pay attention to the questions that I am covering in this session. Now comes our last question of the day, which is about by how much percentage has the volume of digital payments increased in India between 2015 to 16 and 2019 to 20. Now you have to pay attention to this thing that RBI has recently released its data about digital payments and according to that data digital payments has increased in India during the period of 5 years. So uh, the 5 year period is FY16 that is 2015-16 to to FY20. So digital payments have increased by 51.1% so this is the answer. So in terms of volume, what does it mean by volume? Number of transactions. In terms of volume, the digital payments have increased by 55.1% during the 5 year period. And what is the percentage in terms of value? Value means amount in terms of rupee. So in terms of amount, the increase is 15.2%. So these are the two facts that you need to keep in mind that you have to learn anyway regarding this news, regarding this new data on digital payments. Apart from this, RBI's data also mentions that debit card or the card payments, uh, card payments in general including debit and credit cards have increased from 20% to 45%. So in FI16 it was 20% and in FI20 it was 45% and in that debit cards are outperforming credit cards. So debit card users are using them more often in comparison to credit cards. And here we have discussed everything about this question and I hope that you have understood all the things that I have told you very well. And in case you have not understood anything, then you do mention it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video and do come back for tomorrow's lecture as well. Thank you.